Welcome back to Book of Dawn Ioth Academy. I'm tormented by gnomes here with Crowen, Legday, Lemon Kiwi, and Necra. If you're just joining us, our four young heroes, students at the legendary Ioth Academy, are noticing that the magic that protects their school's weather systems seems to be acting oddly. And while surely grown-ups are handling it, they're running an investigation of their own. They've determined that the source of this strange weather is somewhere in the grove where they live, and it's only affecting the grove, and there's some strange magic at work inside of the rain that keeps on falling. They haven't gotten to the bottom of it, but they've suggested that they might follow the river to its source, and perhaps there they can figure out what's going on. Uh, did I miss anything? Did the rest of you have anything that you wanted to add to that before we continue? I think that uh, the Athalor, being a bit of a weary traveler, would have asked for like five minutes to go and grab some things from the room. I'm not sure if any anyone else was going to inventory themselves before moving in. <laughs> I uh, no. Oh, Alex, I have a, a thing to bring up, I, I guess, about it as well. Mm -hmm. Just in that in that same conversation, just the fact that the uh, the the grown ups were. I would say the the grown ups seem to be a little frustrated that the ones who are even above them in 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 power aren't dealing with it or aren't not doing anything about it. They're just letting it be. I guess. Do you think I mean, it's an exam for them? Exam, exam for them. Like hmm. we have exams. Is an exam for us? No, maybe it's a maybe it's a test for them. Maybe they're like yeah, but adult students. I mean, they seemed confused by it though. So uh, we get confused by our lessons. That's true. They are lots of them confusing. Maybe now, one thing I am going to say is that this gathering where everybody is meeting is at breakfast, so. Classes are coming next, so if you want to sneak out to find the river's source, you'll either need to skip out on classes, you probably won't have enough time to go during recess, and you're watched most of the time, so you'd have to either skip out on a class or sneak out at night, or come up with some other plan that the DM hasn't thought of. <laughs> Continue, Crowen. Yeah, maybe that's a possibility. It, seem, it would seem weird if they didn't even know they were having a, a lesson, though. But maybe when are we going to do it? The what you you wanted to go look at the the river? Uh, I you you've you've been you've been drawing a map, right? Kind of, yeah, actually, a little how, bit of, of of the area, yeah. How big is this place? Well, it's I mean very very big. Roll um, our cartography. <laughs> Tools check, please. <laughs> sure. But uh, <laughs> we'll still have the wisdom uh, modifier for it. We can do wisdom. All right. Ooh, is that yeah. an inspiration still? Is that a? Oh, let's see. Let, let's check in the old. Might, let's check in the old war a... chest. Yeah, I think you might have one rattling around. It might have one. <laughs> Survey says yes, you do. All right. A twenty-one. There we go. <laughs> Yay! So. He's looking at the map and nothing I'm makes not sense. Sure. Like, why is all this scale completely off? I thought, oh, it's upside down. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> you would say that the entire grove is probably no more than five miles across. Okay. That's still far. And that you've is, got uh... a fairly good, you've been tracking a lot of the river systems on your map as you, as you go through them. But you folks don't have full run of the of the of the grove you're sort of kind of corralled between different areas so you've had to infer a lot fortunately the extra between your own inherent self-taught skills and the skills you've been picking up in your classes you can at least probably track the yeah sure you know which way is upstream on one stream but you kind of know which way is upstream on several of them so you'd know that the heart of the rivers isn't exactly in the middle of the island is a little bit more kind of to the east. Okay. Well, the grove, it, it seems to be, I mean, it's, it's really big, probably about like five miles. And there's a d bunch of different sections of the river. Some go up, some go downstream. And the center of it, I mean, probably where we want to go to is more to the east. And 
I mean, it'd probably take a while to get there. I don't think we could do it during a, a break or anything. I have to be like a sneak out at night or something. Oh. Guilty yeah, maybe that's on that one. Yeah. What yeah. A, well, what if we take we would look like great students if we took the initiative and proposed a field trip for the class. If we all went as a group, we'd have more minds uh, to the matter, to the task. And what 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 reason would they have to say no? What uh, reason would we have to propose it? I I like the idea. Are, are we going to learn about rivers? Well, it's, I mean, everyone, this is a question on everyone's mind. Why not make it a learning, a learning lesson experience thing? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I mean, we're learning about like these like sciences and things. I mean, we can just learn about nature. That seems to apply. Maybe the adults would say yes, too, because they're curious about this. They don't know what's going on. So maybe they would help out, too. And we mm -hmm. haven't asked them. We haven't actually asked them about what's going on, have we? Maybe this is the time to do so. No point in not trying, I suppose. Yeah, we can Sorry. bring it up in class first thing today, right? Yeah, and they'd probably prefer us to ask permission than forgiveness in terms of us finding out on our own, so... Supervision is always good. But what if they say no? You should no? take the lead on this, Garnet. <laughs> you are also a persuasive type. I down the rock, paper, scissors you for <laughs> the initiative for this <laughs> but it's your lovely idea garnet oh okay well all right <laughs> so but should we go what what if they say no though what are we are we sneaking out after at night mm. or well mm. we can cross that bridge when we come to it I, I suppose this is the easiest way to start right like if they say yes everything's good if they say no we're back here at breakfast tomorrow providing the rain doesn't explode you don't have the backup plan ready you just okay i mean we'll see okay let's go talk to them sounds like a plan all right are we going uh everyone's eaten up you've you've washed up scrubbed everything and you're heading to class yep, yep. Yep, backpack collected, book under arm. Could we try and get maybe get there early before class to just so, maybe talk to them before? Uh, you could try to intercept somebody. Sonab Sonabkur, who's giving the lesson, is going to already be at the Grove, and you're going to be herded there as you usually are by the caretakers. So who would you want to talk to about this? We could ask a, a, a caretaker to lead us there early. That could work. Do you, do you know which one you heard getting frustrated, Alex? Uh, yeah, I think so. It was... I'd look around to see if I'd see the same caretaker that I heard. All right, you look around for a couple of moments, giving the DM just enough time to come up with a name. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one. <laughs> uh, maybe, is it that? No, not that one there. Maybe, hold on. Sven Tisco, um, Sven... Sven <laughs> it was Glaucia. Glaucia. Yeah, good old, good old Glaucia. Everyone knows Glaucia, right? She is... A worry wart. And she is uh apparently in her late or early seventies. Mm. Okay. Still is quite that old for her species. Well, she's human, so yes, she still seems quite spry. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if worry wart was like a species. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the worry wart people of Anakra. Um yeah. if anything, that'd be a type actually uh D D newbies. That's a I great name troll. for a Actually, that's actually a great name for a fey. I'm stealing that. <laughs> True. It's uh, going in the DM's notes, plus one XP. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so Glaucia, who's the one who's complaining about the higher-ups not fixing the whole affair, is nearby. She's, you know, hurting kids. All right, go wash up, wash up. Classes are starting soon. Don't want to keep sound of core waiting. Uh, point and say, oh, there she is. It is uh, caretaker Glaucia. Well, let, let's let's go talk to her while the kids are away. Uh, 
Is Fenty, oh. is Fenty still with us? Oh, she is. She is now. Oh, like oh, damn it, like day. <laughs> Wait, are you actually gonna talk to them before you do this? Oh, we have a special mission for you, uh, Svendiska. Uh, <laughs> could you distract the kids so we can talk to Glo Gloishia about something very secret? Roll, yeah, you're good at you're good at distractions, right? Roll a deception check, Garnet, and Alexander roll a persuasion check as assistance. <laughs> sure. A six. Uh, I'd like to lucky dice that. Okay, burn right. one of your lucky dice and roll an additional d twenty. Oh, do I? Do I just reroll the deception or do I roll? You roll the deception again and take the better of the two. It's like oh, advantage, okay. except even better. Okay. Oh, that's better. Nice. <laughs> nice. Right. So you, you, were, you were sort of beefing it, and she was looking at you incredulously. Alexander speaks up, <laughs> and then uh, she looks over, and she sees that one of the kids who's kind of antsy about bathing is hemming and hawing and not jumping in the water. And she, she nods at you and she rushes over there and accidentally trips. And the two of them both go falling in and everybody laughs and the kids are distracted. Okay. This is our time, guys. Okay, uh, go, go get them. I'm, okay. Uh, miss, miss <clears throat> so I'm saying this wrong. Glo 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll drop it in chat. Okay. Glaucia. Glaucia. Uh, Miss Glaucia, uh, do you have a minute? Why did I sound British there? But do you have a minute? Do you have a minute? That's, that's, that's when uh, Garnet puts on her formal manners. <laughs> Spontaneously transcends the Atlantic Ocean. Happens to the best of us. Did you get your food already? Are you washed up? Yeah, uh, wait, have we washed up? Uh, wait, is that your, what we're your, about to do? Your be, call. Right? I mean, they're sort of in the process of hurting everybody for washing up, so it's your call at what point in the operation you would approach. I don't think it matters. Uh, I'll just, oh, we'll get to that in a minute. I just wanted to talk to you about a fun idea I have for a field trip. I think it would be a really cool learning experience for the class. Mm. The mages are in charge of the lesson plan. What did you have in mind? Well, see, the, the group and I have been doing some really fun science experiments about the rain because we want to learn more about how this rain is being accelerated. See, I, you know, I tested the rain and Ariana tested the, the river and uh, Athelor did something. And uh, <laughs> Alex uh, asked around and we are all very curious about the rain. And I think it would be great, a great learning experience for the whole class if we all um, investigated it together. Well, that's very enterprising of the lot of you, but we're definitely going to have to talk it over with one of the teachers first. Could you help us with this? I mean, they probably listen to you over us. No, it should be felt that all of your contributions are appreciated and taken seriously. I'll, I, I'll have them speak with you. Thank you. Now go wash up. Okay. <laughs> Great job. I think that we take a chance here. That didn't take any persuasion rules, guys. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that went kind well. Of on our side. I think she wants the adventure to happen. Actually, I just thought she made a good argument. Uh, <laughs> at, coming out from behind the screen. Um, just sort of got carried away with the scene, which means it was good. All right, great. Are the lot of you going to class as planned? I think so, yeah. Okay. I feel like we would. Yeah. Uh, I think that's where we we assumed that we'd get our <laughs> our, our union meeting. <laughs> <laughs> our list of demands. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you arrive there, Son of Kur is joined by Grian, who is the Holdra who greeted you into the lodge. She's another one of the teachers here. Sanapkur has been covering a lot of the basics of magical theory, reading, writing, and stuff like that. But 
Today's subject is the casting of spells. And Grion has a, well, it's not really fair to call it a question, but if magic is part of everything around us in the entire world and it's present, then why is it that you lot can cast spells and other people can't? I raise my hand. Because we know how. You're... Okay, yes, that's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There is magic in every living being, but most of the time it's bound up in their bodies, their minds, their hearts, spirits, and souls. What you know how to do, whether you know it or not, is to make yourself a vessel that can hold far more magic than you normally could through mental practice, through spell formulas, through transformation. Some of you already know how to do this. Some of you have felt something like that at the edge of your mind or at the edge of your spirit for a very long time. We're going to teach you how that works because the next question is, what sets apart a novice mage from a great arc mage? Aside from the fact that they know how. Is it like our craft that you've got us to do? Like... I'm not a master sculptor yet. Shut up, Garnet. I'm not a master sculptor yet. <laughs> <laughs> and we aren't all the best at what we do, but with practice, we'll get better at the art, like uh, artisan would with theirs. Yes. But also, as you grow stronger, as you become more disciplined, as you practice magic and spell casting, the vessel you make of yourself is going to be able to hold more and more and more magic. You're a sculptor. You can work with your hands and you can make something out of clay or whatever materials. And the more of that you have, the bigger a thing you can make. But let's say that you have to do all of your work inside of a workshop and you only have as much you can only make things that are as big as you can fit inside your workshop. Mm -hmm. If you could make that workshop bigger and bigger and bigger, you could create bigger and bigger and bigger things. Your mastery of the art still comes into it because you still have to, just because you have lots and lots of clay to work with, doesn't mean you can make something beautiful out of it. But it is the combination of expanding your capacity for holding magic along with your skill at using it and shaping it. Those two together is what makes an Archmage from a novice. There are four steps to casting a spell. First, you open your source of magic. For some of you, it lies within. For some of you, it is an incantation that opens magic from without. That is what's different for every single spellcaster. You open that doorway. You gather the magic into yourself. You fill yourself up with that power. You shape it into the spell that you want to create within that vessel. And then you release it. You tap into magic. You gather the magic. You shape the magic. And then you release the magic. We're going to practice that today. So first off, I came to this one. It might be useful. <laughs> <laughs> and I know some of you have already been up to this. I want you to really think about what you're doing today. So barring any objections, everybody's sort of split off. They've got a couple of uh, Sanip Kaur and Grian are walking up and down the lines. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're doing this narratively is because Magic feels differently to each of you because when you tap into your magical source, it's coming from a different place. So, Alexander, what happens? How do you go about 
tapping into your source of magic? Um, well, for Alex, it is, of course, that, that kind of door in his mind sealing back the mm -hmm. cold energies and try to open that door and mm -hmm. take whatever it is that comes out and then through some like just trying to like will it into into existing try to mm -hmm. shape it into whatever whatever spell um all right so to you it's this this doorway inside your soul somewhere and it's in the same place that the dark voice that occasionally speaks to you and teaches you about sarcasm is found. They come, they are one and the same. And yeah. it's this, this shock of cold, like plunging into Arctic water. You get that sudden rush of adrenaline. And that's what the power feels like. Even though normally cold would just be the absence of power, it's that shock of adrenaline charging through you. That, that's the sensation of power. And you, whenever you open that door, you can feel it building up within yourself. And there's this pressure for it to go somewhere. And because it is icy cold, and when you release that magic, it feels as if you're warming up again. It's, it's as if you can only withstand so much of that frigid power at once. And the more of that that you can withstand and hold within yourself, the stronger you're going to become. Necra, roll for me, if you would, an insight check. 21. As Alexander is going through the exercises that they're teaching, and he taps into that magic, the rain still falling for a moment feels different, feels bitter and cold. Athelor, what does it feel like when you tap into magic? Where does that come from? How do you experience that power filling your mind or your body or your soul? How do you experience it? I suppose with how Athelor kind of, with how his refuge sort of existed in the gap between mm -hmm. the dimensions and the realms of the world, he, he often feels sort of, Almost in the void because he's not there. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's weird to be within the mortal coil. So I I think for Athelor, like he he brings his mind outwards to like towards home mm -hmm. and definitely away from where he is, but uh, moving towards like that pocket dimension where his home is. Mm -hmm. That that's where he gets intercepted by his benefactor, as it were. Yes. You're, you're very far, and I, I sort of think that when, when Athelor thinks about his home and the power of his home, it's always associated with the humming and thrumming of the gyre, but that is not what his power feels like. It, it mm -hmm. feels like a strange, um, discordant vibration. It's not unpleasant, but it is odd. Uh, mm -hmm. It's this sort of high-pitched... Eerie presence? Eerie, eerie vibration or presence, and there's almost like there's words behind it like you're listening to a radio transmission that you can't quite make out and whenever he does it his stomach gets uh like i'm not going to say nausea but that feeling when you go on a roller coaster or you fall you know or, mm -hmm. or the airplane dips really quickly he sort of leaps up uh, as if gravity stops making sense and you get odd flashes of a visual stimulus sometimes they just look like different colored lights sometimes they look like swirling pools of darkness sometimes they're just odd geometric shapes that pop in out of nowhere um it's a very not quite psychedelic experience but it's definitely disorienting it's not anchoring you it's almost the exact opposite like abstract yeah it's like you space out in order to tap into your your power <laughs> L looking at the divine majesty of the cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Not, whomp, not whomp, quite whomp, whomp. Mm -hmm. Stare into the face of God. And there is the, the voice of your uncle, the presence of your uncle seems to be, and as you grow older and more powerful, you'll, you'll feel this more, that mental presence, the same thoughts that just pop into your head unbidden, that mm -hmm. almost seems to guide the generation of this energy. 
as if your mind would just wander off completely and go into unforeseen dimensions, but it's being carefully shepherded back to keep that power in focus. And whereas for uh, Alexander, that power building up feels like I'm becoming incredibly frigid and cold, and if I don't release it, I'm going to freeze and I have to get rid of it. For Athelor, it's just this increased alienation and disconnection from his surroundings or even from the concept of up, down, left, right, you know, reality. But it always seems to be held in check. It never strays away too far. And I don't know if he notices it or not. Those limits. Is it like what you see in like cartoons sometimes where like their spirit kind of vibrates out of their body? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, I will also say that your teachers can't feel this. And they, they will sort of like talk to you and try to talk you through and, and get an understanding of what it is that you're experiencing. So let's go to Garnet next. How does Garnet experience, when, when Garnet taps into the source of her power, goes from not using magic to using magic, how does she experience it? It's probably like a type of concentration where mm -hmm. it's a form of energy, but it's not come, stemming from life, but rather the devoid of life mm -hmm. so from the opposite of heat being cold or light is darkness but not like a shadowy darkness but rather just a void mm -hmm. and kind of likes to act as a conduit for like energy to come through her um and that's where sometimes maybe she lacks that control so either too mm -hmm. much comes out or just not the right spell comes out type of thing so it kind of acts as like a conduit but kind of coming from the devoid of life and like a type of darkness um and, and to it takes get a there lot of focus to get there it takes a lot of focus and she has like mental exercises that she's learned in mental discipline i imagine oh dear oh oh dear <laughs> dear 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 this is a bad time <laughs> oh. i imagine <laughs> that if you're going to channel the power, have, have any of you ever tr contemplated um, your own non-existence? <laughs> like, yes. Tried Are we simulations? <laughs> like having a non-existential crisis? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Many like, times, right, actually. Kinda. Right. So channeling the void kind of requires you to imagine what it would be like to not exist and not feel anything and not be capable of mm -hmm. thinking. The only way for you to get there is to either have an existential crisis or, you know, think of the sound of one hand clapping, sort of go through these very abstract, but also almost rigid mental exercises to put yourself in, in a almost like anti mindfulness. And I, mm -hmm. I feel like when, if you can balance your, your mind in that space, that is when the door flow, flows and you feel it. And it's almost, a, a, it's a numbness. It's not like cold rushing through you. It's uh, the closest thing I can think of is when you smoosh your eyes and you get these weird swirlies <laughs> and, and you open and you see, it's not that you see darkness, it's that you see nothing. That's what it feels like or if your legs go numb. And so when it runs out of her control, I, and feel free to correct me, it's your character. I imagine it would almost feel like just losing all sensation and things just happening. Yeah, it's kind of like trying to control a tap. So when the water comes out, mm -hmm. you're just trying to hold it at that same pace, that same flow mm -hmm. as kind of like, if I was the faucet, magic is the water. And it's just, I'm trying to keep a steady flow, but sometimes it might, P you know, putting a thumb out, over the hose. Yeah, putting yeah, a thumb over the hose. <laughs> pinching the hose in half, you know. All right. Well, narratively speaking, as you're opening that door, we've hit 30 subscriptions, and so we have a. Uh... Oh, an act of God. <laughs> an act of God. Hags. Oh, 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 what fun! What delightful fun. Hags, oh a God, cackling oh bargain God. or a wicked <laughs> curse. <laughs> that was that was quite good. Thank you. Oh. Very junk rat of you. Oh, you boss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's how we're going to interpret this. Oh, the whole river adventure just changed. <laughs> As Garnet opens this forbidden door into the void, which again nobody else immediately perceives except for herself none of those present perceive and yet there is a power somewhere within the grove 
that notices a shadow passing across the magical landscape, a dark door being opened and then shut, takes notice and waits for you. So yeah, Garnet, as far as you know, die? nothing's happened. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> so am I going to die episode two? <laughs> you, you, you don't experience any of this, but okay. someone, someone noticed it. All right. Finally, Ooh. Ariana. This is your shadow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ari- Ariana's plant friends noticed. Psst, tree, pass it on. There's a hang over here. <laughs> <laughs> what does Ariana experience when she goes to where her magic is and, and opens that pathway to sort of let that power flow through her? How does she experience it? What is it like for her? Is there a metaphor attached to it? Are there any sensory experiences attached to it? I feel like in a lot of ways, she feels like this very warm, very bright power is flowing through her, Mm -hmm. you know, almost in the way that you kind of have like a natural living aura or something like that um, in in anime that I will not name on this stream, (laughs) Uh, you know, but it, it does like wash over her body in a lot of ways and she can feel it kind of coming from her core and, and just kind of extending outwards towards the rest of her limbs. Um, so I feel like that that mm-hmm. would be the way that she would experience getting in touch with her magic. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So this lesson, this first lesson, they've taught you the four steps of what happens when you cast a spell. If any of you have had previous magical experience, um, I think... Ariana would, uh, honestly, Garnet would from your studies uh, after, most likely after you left the city. And um, Athelore, just growing up in a magical culture, would at least be familiar with the four stage concept of spell casting. But today's exercise is one, to teach everyone who isn't aware of it, drill them on it, there will be a quiz later. And two, to sort of start with the first step of just controlled tapping into the source of your magic. As the lessons go on, they're going to start moving to the other parts. And as you learn more about magic, you may learn to tap into other sources as well. Because not everybody has their own inner reserves. But that's a lesson for another day. Uh, the, the whole rest of it is just like, all right, turn it on and turn it off. Now talk to me about what you feel. Now turn it on and turn it off. What did you feel about this time? Uh, just sort of this dialogue with the teachers going back and forth. Are all of you forthcoming about this? Let's start no. with Crowen. No, I think in terms of uh, what he, what Alex will say he feels during during this mm-hmm. is... Hmm. Everyone else come up with your lies while he thinks. <laughs> yeah, that is, this is interesting, actually. <laughs> Quick, roll for lie. Roll yeah. for lie generation. <laughs> He'll say it, it kind of feels like it's just some innate uh, like ability from within that he's kind of like had. Uh, he'll say like he, he's kind of like had always, and it feels like it's some like warmth. Um, <laughs> so I feel like it's some warmth just like brewing, and as soon as he, he taps into it, it starts to like emerge out of like something within him, but then you know can close it off and okay, and then shut it off at that point. Roll a deception check. Oh, yeah. You're 22. Good at this. 22! Yeah. Hot damn! Yeah. Sheesh. All right. Good damn, boys. Grian the Holdra accepts your answer and is happy with you and excited for you. Uh, <laughs> Sonipkur is speaking. The Dragonborn is speaking with Athalor. How does he... What does he tell Sonipkur? I, I feel like my magic is so much like the rest of my family's. It's, it's mostly, it feels like home. You know how I asked for a box that used to hum like Vijaya back home. I, I feel that kind of vibration inside myself, and I feel like if I can resonate with that, then I can do the shaping and projection that you talked about. And that 
I could unleash that as a power. Is he being wholly honest? Is that his actual interpretation, or is he holding things back? He does not mention El Uncle. Okay. Uh, <laughs> roll, roll a deception check. There's a lot of truth wrapped around this, so that's going to... It's the best kind of lie. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, you, you get a little bit of a, you know, the draconic hairy eyeball looking at you, but... <laughs> We're going to have to crack this nut on another day. Doesn't say that. Thinks it. Keep working on this, kid. Um, <laughs> and that is going to burn. You only, congratulations, you only have one disadvantage left. Yay. After this. I, I feel saying that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never skip sleep ever again. <laughs> All right. Like day and light. Sanit Kur was vaguely suspicious, but wrote it down for later. All right. Um, what does Garnet say to Grian, the, the Holdra, who's wearing like red flowers in her hair and across her clothes, this very like fiery flaming, a lot of the same colors that worshippers of Zalar would use, though she's not wearing any paraphernalia or, or symbols of Zalar. Uh, she probably has had a hard time getting focused back or just coming back to it feels mm -hmm. like whenever she was doing that magic focus thing, she was kind of like out of body experience. Dissociating? It, it, yeah, it was hard to kind of come back. So, mm -hmm. so sorry, what was the question? What? <laughs> Tell me what you feel. What does it feel like when you tap into that power? Are you opening a door? Are you walking through a pathway? Are you drawing from a well? What does it feel like? Feels like nothing. Nothing. Yeah. You don't feel anything at all? Nothing. I I, I, feel, I feel like I want to call for a deception check, except that you're not lying. So I'm going to have you roll a deception check with advantage. Deal. A 19. Okay. Um... Well, there's probably a note in your file, but it's not about being a liar. It's about maybe we need to find some other um, holistic modalities in order to reach this student. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sanipkur, the dragonborn, goes over to Ariana and asks the same question. What do you feel, child? Do you see? Do you feel? Do you taste? <laughs> No one expects the draconic tongue. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> I so you know, Ariana is very lawful good. You know, she she would be very forthcoming about her answer, um, and so she mm -hmm. would basically say, you know, it feels like there is magic that is stored within me that is kind of like this warm ball uh, that kind of extends outward in the warmth into my you know my fingertips and my toes and. Um, it, it just feels like I'm unlocking something good. Good, good. And she walks off. The lesson takes, you know, about an hour of just people going through mental exercises. And one of the things that they're going to be teaching you is ways to hone your discipline and your focus. But given that you are 10... Part of this is the crafts that they're teaching you. Part of this is like exercise. They're not going to try to teach kids meditation techniques. Most kids, or they're gonna, they'll try, but they're not going to hardcore go into that. Only the kids who really respond well to that. Uh, for everyone else, some of them they teach to literally walk the labyrinth as a form of meditation, moving with your body, following a twisting path, not having to think about it and other sort of mental exercise disciplines. But the lesson is over after an hour, and the lot of you, at least when this started, you had different things on your mind. You were planning on having a meeting with the grown-ups to... So, all right, we'll go ahead and have that. Sanapkur and Grian are 
I'm here to speak with you after class as some of the kids are milling about and taking care of their, their notes and getting their next assignments and such. Yes. Got Hello. Nudge Garnet. Oh, oh, is this? Oh, uh, we, we were talking to, fetching name, G Glaucia, about a fun field trip idea that we had that I think would be a really great learning experience for all the students. If you're open to it, Speak. hearing about it. Well, there's a big mystery about the rain and then the kids are all, I think it would tend to a lot of worries and concern about the rain if the kids could be active in the investigation. You know, some of us have been studying the water, like uh, Ariana and I. Um, Alexander's been asking around and Athelore exists. So I think it would be great <laughs> if we could all get the students to contribute because I think it would help relieve a lot of anxiety that the class has. The issue is complex. Your grasp of theory is not sophisticated enough to grapple with it. But there is no harm in a field exercise. Yes. We will do this next week. Oh, awesome. Now, what have you learned? And I'm not going to make all of you repeat everything that you've learned. You are allowed to say, we tell them what we've experienced. And you're allowed to just summarize if you happen to have to change any of those details around. <laughs> yeah, actually, Alex will make it a bit more, a bit more specific. Yeah. Um, and try to get like a... Yeah. Asking around? Oh, on the... Okay, never mind, never mind. For the, yeah, uh, for the water situation. Around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because they're down for the field trip, but they're also interested in the results of your studies because, you know, gotcha. enterprising <laughs> young scholars, that's the sort of initiative that, that will take you far in this world. So tell me about your methodology and your findings, please. Uh, well, I... Maybe it wasn't so much more asking as... I mean, I wanted to, but I got a, a bit nervous. I don't know. It seems like all the 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 adults didn't really know what was going on but tried to observe and kind of um see if it was like a a, a bad thing that was going on if it was ex expected or not and kind of see what, what what was happening and who was going to deal with it and learned a couple of things from my observations rule a deception check but again this doesn't mean a lie detector instantly realizes what you actually did. It just means that they realize, you know, that there's I'll more to this story. Were used. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Twelve. I rolled a natural twenty. Oh, oh, no. No. Bullshit, Check kid. Get the fuck out of here. You're Objection. Expelled. You're going to jail. <laughs> You're going to liar's prison. Your Honor, that's bullshit. <laughs> Your honor is bullshit. <laughs> Son of Kur looks at you, tilts her head. <laughs> and looks at the rest of you. And mentally notes to speak with Glaucia later. <laughs> Again, feel free to either actually narrate what your character says or to summarize how you present your findings, folks. Mm -hmm. There's a reason I'm doing this. There's a variable at play. Does she um, look to someone else to kind of just generally kind of seeing who's going to talk, who's going to speak up next? Well, I was doing more than just existing as uh, Garnet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm not great at it yet, but, but. I was trying to discern if there were any chemical irregularities with the rain that was falling compared to the water in the river. And to do that, I was taking the sculptures that I've been making to hone our skills, crafts. I don't know. And I put one out 
in the rain whenever it rained so that I would see how the water reacted with it. And I washed another one in the stream that was here when we came because it was not raining when we came. So we thought that that would be the control. But I lost the control slightly, a lot, in the river. So I didn't have a point of comparison for my variable. You lost control of the control. <laughs> my books say that's called irony. <laughs> <laughs> so At this point, you'd be familiar with the fact that that is a uh, Dragonborn's laugh, not them hissing at you like a cat. <laughs> uh, do the rest of you have anything specific that you want to deliver with your findings? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like we said before, you know, like I said before, Ariana is very lawful good. I feel like she mm -hmm. would kind of take a take an opportunity of this to be as forthcoming with her results as possible. And so mm -hmm. she'd probably explain like, you know, I learned how to detect magic and so i went into the middle of the clearing and i tried to see if there was anything unfamiliar or weird happening with the rain and it felt very cold and bitter and like something was off cycle when it came to how the water was actually falling Very strange. Garnet, I forget. Have you presented your findings yet? Not yet. All right. How do you go about it? Sanabkur just sort of takes this note, noted in stride, takes a look at you, nods, weighing, weighing her options, turns to Garnet, who hasn't spoken yet. Probably, Garnet felt probably a little bit insulted when... Um, guy was saying that, oh, we're just kids, like, we don't know what we're doing, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and probably wants to address that with, along with the findings. So, probably starts with, like, well, with all due respect, sir, uh, we have some really important findings. Uh, for myself, you said that, we, you know, we are just kids and we don't know what we're doing, but I cast Identify on the, I did a ritual on the water, and Ariana and I kind of concluded that the water and the production of water has been accelerated and the ma the water is very unique to this grove and this is a particular situation that isn't a fed you know as alex found out this is very unique to the grove only and the water isn't magical but rather where it comes from is and although maybe this is not interesting to you this is uh we were talking about the different stages of mages, but rather not where the power comes from, but I think how you use it. And I think we used all of our gifts in a really a smart way, I think. Hmm. Roll a persuasion check, please. Since I so rudely denied you one earlier. <laughs> oh, that was advantage, sorry. That's uh, fine. When, when this happens and you accidentally roll with advantage or disadvantage, we always take the first number in the roll. Oh. So right, cool. 17, which is good. Uh, hmm. Thorough, yes. Decent work. Students, every 12 years, there is an upheaval within the Academy. It is a side effect of multiple overlaid enchantments of unspeakable complexity. Perhaps even Ioth himself only understands. Perhaps it's grown so large over the years, not even he can grasp it. I told you. I told you. <laughs> the rupture. <laughs> we are due for the rupture next year. And we suspect that this strange weather is just an early warning sign of the thousands of spells within the Academy 
bumping up against each other. We'll all be warned and taught about it before it happens next year. We don't think there's anything to worry about, just a strange side effect, but its effects can be measured. So next week we will go out into the grove and we, we can teach everybody how to do this. I don't think your worries have anything to fall upon, but it will be a good lesson. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's oh. what we're here for. All right. Uh, barring anything else, the caretakers are now being like, I'm missing four. I'm missing four over here. Oh, there they are. <laughs> are you are you lot done yet? Yes, we were just... Are we? Negotiation. <laughs> yes. No, good, good work. Alchemy classes for that one. Son of Cure points at Athalor. <laughs> when you hit your oh, orange no, robe, sign up for alchemy. Did I just have a curriculum? All right. <laughs> uh, barring anything else, the brown robed folks are going to take you along your way. Lessons continue over the course of the next week. And there's a little bit of a buzz as everybody is told that there's going to be a, uh, a field trip next week. Next week. Yay! Hooray! Ooh. Field trip! Anything before day of? Uh, right. I think mostly just a, lo a lot of uh, very intense sort of like moving back and forth between the the magic place in the brain and mm -hmm. <laughs> reality. As far Can apart as they may seem. Before right. we go to bed or something, can I draw like a mustache on Athalor's statue? <laughs> <laughs> well, on the fe on the phoenix thing. Yeah, like a unibrow and like a mustache or something. Uh, like you know, just graffiti it, but in yeah. a kid way. <laughs> uh, when are you doing this? When Athalor is asleep, distracted, or absent? Probably when he's asleep. Okay, roll a stealth check. Oh yes. <laughs> Okay. 15. Okay. Athalor, what's your passive perception score? It should be near the bottom left. Uh, 10. Well, that's less than 15. Um, Alexander and Ariana, are you both asleep in your bunks, minding your business, anywhere involved as this is going on? No. <laughs> uh, depending on how Maybe. late at night it is, Alex may be up uh, drawing some... Mm. It, that's fair to say. You've got your oh, little. Can I borrow that? <laughs> can I borrow that? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> Just walks past, sneaking as he's in the middle of drawing. Asks to borrow it. Sort of takes it. <laughs> he's just <laughs> lying there, like. What? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you I doing? Think... Or, you know, just like maybe side eye, be able to see like what is happening mm -hmm. and maybe just like, you know, chuckle a little bit, but she, she wouldn't say anything. She knows it's in good fun. Mm. <laughs> All right. You, you sneak, you creep right past him as he's wandering the paths of the trance. You take the ink in the quill, you make your own modifications to his art and uh, <laughs> you steal away back to your bunk. Santisco's head pops out. You know, she's been watching this entire time. And she gives you an approving nod. She's like really excited, nods at you enthusiastically, and then puts her hand up to shushing and goes back under the covers. Because <laughs> yeah. you're like the okay emoji and mm -hmm. scary stuff. All right. Uh, the next morning, the day of the field trip, everybody is, again, excited. You're going on, on a hike out into the forest past the, past the paths where you'd normally wander. Everyone packs. Uh, the caretakers make sure to pack snacks, and they've got water and all, all the lot of it. Everyone gets a nice hearty breakfast. Not too heavy because they don't want you to be falling asleep. Low on carbs this time. Uh, Athelore, you notice. Well, actually, would Athelore even notice? That his his work has been modified. Uh, I I think it's more just like it it is it is done for doing it rather than done for the product at this moment. Mm -hmm. he, he, uh, should I roll like a perception just to see if, if he like just glances and goes, hmm, 
much strange. It is your choice. You can either choose to notice, not notice, or you can choose to trust in the dice. Uh, I, I feel like Athelor would look at them, but not be looking for any demarcations, but more looking at the form of them. Just mm -hmm. be like, am I getting better at this? Right. So, uh, uh, Is this his preferred dice. subject, by the way? He just keeps making the holy symbol of Zalar over and over in different <laughs> iterations. But he, he, he just, he's, he's like, he's found like a, an object and it's like, well, I, I know what the goal is and now I know where I've started. So it's easier to measure pro progress if I'm doing iterations upon the same thing. So when Garnet crept over there to uh, vandalize his one statue, how many did she actually find? Oh, she, she probably waded through five or six. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just a collection of steadily less shit. <laughs> As all of them have, were, of course, crafted with disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> all right. Day of, and they gather everyone into the forest and they establish rules. All right, buddy system, buddy system, everybody. Each of you, you're with one buddy. Look to your left or your right. That's your buddy. The two of you have to stick together. If you lose track of your buddy, alert a caretaker immediately. Um, I'd like all four of you to roll for initiative. Ah, we're fighting. <laughs> oh, oh God. perfect. Great start to the fight. Garnet got a three. Athlor got 20. Oh, shit. Alexander got 13. Ariana hey. got 11. Girls together, right? And oh, Sven... So, oh, I forgot to choose my attack, a token. Oops. Oh, that's fine. Oh, Don't worry about it. Do uh, we're not actually doing combat. We're just rolling to see if Sventisco gets to snipe one of you before it's too late. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> Apollor, you get to pick your buddy first. Uh, I, I think Athelor picks Ariana. Mm -hmm. and... Are you bitch? <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 she's the least weird. <laughs> like, Alex, Alex is kind of shifty. <laughs> and Garnet seems occasionally unreliable. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> all right, all right, excellent. Uh, the next person to win the initiative was Alexander. All right. Uh, pick so Ventisca. No, I was getting pick guard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got, got to be with a teacher like the, like the most unpopular kid in class. Oh. Mm. A corpse has been discovered. <laughs> Actually, you know what else has been discovered? The fact that Leg Day did in fact have one more lingering disadvantage from chat. So I'm gonna need you to do a take back see on that initiative roll, my friend. Oh, oh shit. Mm. Do, do I just roll again? Just roll Is again, and we're taking the worst of the two. Oh, what the hell? Oh, what the absolute oh, hell? Oh, wow. <laughs> he got a, a, a dirty 20 again. Oh. <laughs> All right. That's too fucking good, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, baby. We're Let's to rise go. above this advantage. No, exactly. It doesn't mean anything anymore. <laughs> All right, Sventisco buddies up with somebody else. You you could totally tell she was doing not the whole oh oh pick me pick me not that thing. That's that's like Squeaky's territory, right? No, she was just preparing to like speak up before anyone had a chance to say otherwise and just say, "Yep, I'm with this person." But uh, too late. The the lot of you are buddied up. Everybody is gathered together. Make sure the caretakers make sure everyone's wearing their good hiking shoes, and they are leading. They're going to go ahead and lead you out into the forest off the path. And as they do so, they sort of part the magical lights and the caretaker in front sets a new magical light and it's kind of this bright green to indicate the front of the pack and the caretaker in the back has a bright red to indicate the back of the pack and they're going to start, actually no, they'd use red in the front and violet in the back. That's what they would do because this is not traffic school. <laughs> so, uh, you. <laughs> and you head out and all the kids are buzzing about, oh, we're going off to this new place. We've never been off the path, you know, because obviously nobody's ever been off the path. That would be wrong. Mm -hmm. no and they way. head out into the forest. Um, is anybody here proficient in the survival skill? No, mega lol. I'm barely, barely shocked I'm not. <laughs> yeah, shocked you're not either. <laughs> All right. 
Well, there's still time. You got more years of, of education ahead of you. So the only person who would actually notice this would be our cartographer in the group, Alexander. And you notice that they're not heading after a couple of hours and, and stops for snacks because they're 10 year olds. So they're not like, we're hiking for two hours straight. It's like, I want milk. <laughs> <laughs> We've had one, yes, but what about second milk? So you, you make some good headway up there, take a break for snacks. Everyone gets inspected, buddy system, buddy system. Take another break, go out there. Sven Tisco is talking about the fact that um, there are probably, if there are any elf-eating green dragons out here, we'll never see them coming. Their lands, their homes are protected by powerful mm. enchantments. And if you're not an elf, they can seize your mind in the snares of their spells, and you'll vanish into the woods forever. Can I roll a, an insight check? Roll an insight check, sure. <laughs> I feel like at this point we should get advantage versus uh, since he goes bullshit. So. Oh, an 18 and a 20, and that's going to clear the disadvantage again. All right. So <laughs> what she's saying is completely true where she comes from. Why is it you so often tell these lies to try and intimidate me, Sventisco? I have no idea what you're talking about. I would never, ever tell a lie. So what you're telling me is that the greatest mage in the known galaxy, Ioth, who runs a school, has child-eating dragons inside the dome. Only the strongest and the wittiest will survive. <laughs> If you can outsmart a child eating, elf eating, spell casting, enchantment, poison breathing, smooth talking dragon, then you deserve to be a great wizard, Athalor. Well, I'm not getting good practice for outsmarting the smooth talking here, am I? <laughs> her, her eyes light up for a moment. She stares at you. And she kind of laughs like, all right, yeah, no, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. And she goes back to bothering her partner. <laughs> uh, who who just looks shell just absolutely stunned, just wide eyed. What is happening to me? Somebody help me! Um, <laughs> but through all of this, Alexander, you've noticed that they are taking the. Yep. Uh, <laughs> the wrong path, the wrong path into the woods in order to get to the heart of the river. They're they're Double going to hides. some tributary stream or something else instead. <laughs> Double lags. Oh boy. <laughs> well, I think upon noticing this, would turn to uh, his uh, his traveling companion Garnet and say, Garnet, I. I don't think we're headed to the center of the river. It seems like, at least from what I've drawn and, and seen, we're heading to some other part of it. Well, they probably have a reason to take us where we're going, I guess. But more to add to your map, maybe. Maybe. Do you think it matters what part we, we go to? I mean, I, I, I don't know. Well, I think it's great we get to go to somewhere we haven't been before, especially with adults, because imagine we had to go there by ourselves. Obviously, we're going somewhere safe, I'd imagine, but mm, should be fun. Athol looks over her shoulder. Alex, make sure you're mapping this all. You might need it later. Taking, write this down. Write this down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking mental note. Don't worry. I've been. I, I, I can do it. I'll have it all down when we get back. Gone if he forgets. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget. All right. I need. A few things to happen. Um, this information has been conveyed to the whole party that you're actually going to like a tributary stream of the river rather than the very heart of the river. Is everybody cool and on board with this? Yep. Yep. Okay. First, I need everybody in the party to roll a perception check. This is my time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Garnet got a 14. Alexander got a natural 20. Wow. 
Ariana got a 14, and like they got Boys are better. <laughs> 16. That, that's my duo. What you see? What you see? Aren't we all your duo? <laughs> In different ways. All right. So, Alexander, you see it. As, as you're heading up one branch of the river, away from a smaller, you're heading up a large stream, away from a smaller stream that, according to your notes, should go all the way up to the heart of the river, you think you see something moving in the water. A, a glistening light. Hmm. I'm kind of just look at it for a glistening light. I continue to look at it and see if it like if it's a constant thing or if it was just like a one random kind of occurrence. Mm -hmm. Just look at it for like 10, 15 seconds. No, it flickers out and then it goes up the river and just out of sight. And then it creeps back around the corner. This sort of silvery shimmering pattern under the water. Got it. Got it. Do you see that? Kind of point towards the... Uh, not really full point. Like he's trying to be super obvious to everybody else, but like mm -hmm. nudge and kind oh. of discreetly point towards it. In the water, what? there's something. It looks like there's something in the water. It's like swimming back and forth. And do you know what that is? Would I know what this is? Once it's pointed out to you, roll a Arcana check. Fifteen. Ariana, they're up to something. Shh, mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> You're a terrible team player. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Ariana can come. Just not have to look. All right. Oh my god. Garnet, it looks it looks like magic. It looks like a spell actually creating that effect. Uh, you would call it a let me see if I can give you the details here. That is, it's illusion. No, it's evocation magic. So it's not an illusion. The light is real. Um, and it, it's created by a, a cantrip, a very simple, reusable spell. So it is magic. It is a spell, which means somebody's casting it. Does anyone around us look like they're casting some shit? <laughs> any casters? Hey, any, any casters? Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm casting here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> roll an insight check, and then everybody in the party roll one d twenty, please. Oh, someone's trolling. Twenty two, mm. not bad at all for oh. the insight check. <laughs> oh, I'm unlucky. Sure. One leg day Damn with it. a five on the d twenty roll. Crone with a natural one on the roll. Necro with a 17. And Lemon, give me a flat 1d20, please. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. A 19. Oh. All right. Oh, well, that let's see your fantastic one. prize. I'm rolling here. Oh. Oh, well, no. Why would you tell me saying that? What, the what? image on the card is a spiral. The word, the t name of the card is Annihilation. Hmm. Great. Uh, uh, R.I.P. guys. Thanks. I like my session. Going. <laughs> Reality warps in upon itself and a sphere of utter nothingness disappears. Okay. All right. Oh, this for Garnet. This to ditch this shit reality. <laughs> this ties directly into Garnet's powers. All right, uh, Garnet, you've been you've been practicing a lot, right? Just opening that door to the nothing quite a bit, and uh, perhaps your mental influence has been a little bit frayed, perhaps. That door is open a little wider than it normally would be. And you can you can feel that power burgeoning, that numbness, that emptiness, sort of burgeoning beneath the surface of everything that you're doing right now. The power is there. 
and it is unusually strong right now. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what that does at the moment. We'll see as time goes on. But you, you have an unusual amount of your void magic swirling within you. Uh, uh, you also can't tell. Also, nobody nearby appears to be casting a spell. No one's casting here. Can I get a reaction to this? Absolutely. So this is probably something I've not felt before, at least... If I have like lost control, I'd probably be very nervous to lose that in front of a mm -hmm. class, especially my professor. So I probably dash into like the bush or like somewhere, not like far off the path, but just in case I were to like some unleash something, then it would not be around anyone. Okay. So Garnet just goes running off into the woods. <laughs> just, like, for instance, uh, I'm next to her. I see her just <laughs> run off from yeah. talking so, to her. <laughs> Alex, I don't think you've passed the buddy system. <laughs> no, I... Why does she... Uh, I guess... Sh should, around, should, kinda, we, sh should we? Kind of just nods and, and yeah, chases I, I, after... I, I, th I think we should. <laughs> okay, so the lot of you are going to head off into the forest to follow? <laughs> Is Ariana yeah. getting buddied along? We're going, Ariana! Yeah, no, I... Think, I'm I think Athalar would be, like, pulling me at this point. <laughs> I see everyone running, and I'm like, I, I dropped something. <laughs> it's, not, it's fine. You feel a great power stirring within you. Oh. Oh, I feel much better. That's much better. The power is gone. <laughs> All right. When you run around the corner into the forest, uh -oh. you see Garnet standing. She hidden herself in the woods. Garnet, you have never felt the void this strong before. It is coursing. In fact, you can barely feel anything. Or perhaps you can feel a great deal of absolutely nothing. Floating in the air some, let's say, 10, 15 feet away from you is a hole in the universe. How close are we behind Garnet? Uh, let's use the map for starters. You're, let's say you're, you know, just maybe 15 varying. What, what's the buddy system? Alexander was the buddy. Go ahead and move yourselves as you see fit. I'm not going to yeah. mess around with you anymore. I'm yes. dragging it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, ah, that looks like a you problem. You know, we buddy, but... <laughs> You're not that guy. You're not that I guy. I just think the bunny system is prepared for this kind of calamity. Oh, so we so we see that something. like do we see that like every chase after? Do we see that that void, that hole of nothing? Yes. Oh, you it? yeah. You all, as soon yeah. as you run off, you can all see that. You're gonna do great, Gunner. <laughs> Gunner, are, are you are you all right? What? It is two feet in diameter. <laughs> it is floating. And it is utterly, utterly dark. Just no light escapes it. Uh, are you all right, Garnet? Why, why did you run off? What, what, what is I, that? Did you, did you, did you make? I that? didn't do it. I don't. I don't think I did. I was just. I just dropped something, and I just didn't want to hurt anybody or embarrass myself in front of the teacher. Uh, I. I don't know what that is. What do you mean you dropped something? This is. Uh... Did you like launch it? Did you throw it? What, what? <laughs> Did you drop the fabric of the universe? I apparently. Does anyone know what the hole in, in the, the glitch in the system over there? How are we the simulation? Oh god! <laughs> oh god! Takes off VR headset. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't, we can, I don't know we what can solve is. this. We can solve this. We can solve this. Uh, 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 are there any other caretakers nearby? Uh, you've sort of escaped past their uh, vision for the moment. You're not sure how you managed to get away from them. Odd. Almost <laughs> as if some third party was intervening. Uh, casting spells oh, in your Francisco, box. distracting try to, them. Try to swing forward, Ariane. You, you should detect magic thing. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Why do you sound so surprised? 
Not that it, you know, I, I just wasn't <laughs> thinking about it. I was looking at the, the void hole in front of us. Okay, no, dude, go do the thing. Okay. <laughs> I use detect magic. <laughs> okay. So uh, what you're going to do on your character sheet under the spells tab. Yes. Go to your level one spell slots. And where it says mm -hmm. uh, slots remaining, you're just, you've used one of your two level one spells for the day. So mark that down. Say that again. No I worries. See, I see detect magic. Yep. Above that, where it says level one spells, there's a thing that says slots total and slots remaining. That's basically where you keep track of how many spells you've cast today. Okay. So I have one left. Correct. Okay. I got it. All right. Roll an arcana check as you attempt to analyze this do, 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 do. with detect magic. Do, do, do. 18. 18 total. Um, this is nothing. And it's eating magic. Or at least magic is going into it and not coming out. It, it's it's stabilized. It has some sort of a magical, like, like uh, as your sensory awareness comes towards it, you can feel a little bit of resistance. There's a magical field stabilizing and holding it in place. Uh, and that field seems to be connected to Garnet. But past it, you ever have that sensation if you've ever gone like rock climbing or you've walked up in a skyscraper that has that glass floor that you can step on and you just get that I am about to fall and die feeling? Mm -hmm. Like that, except just like in place vertigo. <laughs> Yeah, way worse. Like, oh, uh, that's the edge of, like, reality right there. I don't want to fall in there. And this is... It's almost the opposite of unbelievably powerful. It's unbelievably anti-powerful, unbelievably nothing. A void. Yeah, it's a void. It's a black hole. <laughs> Are you going to be the first person to map a black hole? <laughs> Oh, write this down, write this down. I can, <laughs> I can draw, I don't know how to map a black hole. Wait, guys. I've got something we can use to see what's inside. Well, uh... Athelor produces something that he found earlier that day. It's a pair of toe socks. <laughs> 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 Which were mysteriously delivered to his bedside chamber. Garnet, you're the closest. Oh my God. Throws the toe socks at Garnet. I refuse to catch it because it's your worn socks, so I dodge. They're, they're, the socks. they're new. <laughs> oh, I thought you were wearing them. You were gifted those like weeks ago in game time. <laughs> you think that I would wear toe socks? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I pick them up. All right. I give it a whiff to make sure he's not lying, and then throw the sock. Were you lying? <laughs> <laughs> no, little, he, he would not wear toe sniff. socks. He thinks he's a okay. stupid little human thing. <laughs> Roll an athletics check, Garnet. Oh, this is not good. Okay. 12. Okay. I just too didn't hurt that much. <laughs> you throw the toe socks into <laughs> the hole in the universe. Hooray! <laughs> and they are obliterated. What? Oh, they deserved it. Yeah, completely obliterated. That? Oh, shit. Out of the woods walks a figure wearing violet robes. Oh, shit. Oh, I, Wait, which, I, which were the ones I, that were wearing violet robes again? It's or... in rainbow order. It's This would be somebody who's approaching graduation. White robes are mm. once you've graduated. Uh, violet robes would be like right before graduation. So this would be an older student. This would be like a kindergartner running into a senior in high school. Mm. And how far away are they at this point? Uh, I'll grab a, a piece. Let me see. <laughs> the black hole just sitting on the map. <laughs> for, me, for me, it's under Ariana's dice. <laughs> Your dice is the Michael. Slips into a on a banana and just falls into the hole. <laughs> 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 Critical ones obliterates it. 
Congratulations, to playing roll a new character. It's toilet flushed out of the Lara universe. Wanna... <laughs> right, I'm, I'm going to use this this piece right here. Uh, she emerges from, I'd say, the southwest. She has a staff. It looks fairly new, recently polished. It's got some runes on it. Uh, her hair is tied up, but you can see it's fairly long, brunette. And she looks with a frown at the hole in the universe and the four children who are standing watch over it. What you that got there, close. newbies? Uh, hole. I, <laughs> Ariana just hides behind. <laughs> At the lore at this point. She's like, I don't know how to explain this. We have nothing. What? That was there when we got here. Yeah. What were you kids doing over here? Like, uh, Alexander at this point is like, uh, is scared about getting caught. He's going to try to do some, do some magic. Okay, um, what do you have in mind? Shit. Alexander's going to try to, uh, open the door a little bit in his mind and manifest a, a, a minor illusion um, okay. and try to make a, a, a sound kind of off to the off to the east like a, a kind of like shrill scream just like emanate that from kind of the furthest point away that he can okay um the sound is carried to you on an ice cold glacial wind and cast out into the space beyond you. Is this a cantrip or a level one spell? Yeah, a cantrip. I All right. A, a spectral scream emanates throughout the land. Roll for me an arcana check, and I'm going to use the result of this arcana check to basically in place of a, dece of a deception check. Are you proficient in arcana? Did you get that? Uh, yes. I, yeah, I then did. yes, do that roll. A nine. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you're actually, if you're proficient in deception, I will take that as well. I am. Should yeah, let's just, take that uh, instead. Or seven as the base, I would take Arcana or... per deception or performance. Take the best of the three. Okay. Do you want me to re-roll or just use yeah, re-roll? Okay. Twenty-one deception. Twenty-one. All right. So a scream, a very convincing, sh piercing scream emanates out from the distance, just like towards the one of the trees to the east, like mm -hmm. just in that direction. Yep. Away from us. What was that? Huh? <laughs> All right. The oh. senior looks off in the distance and then looks at you and says, Oh, that's going to get up. the caretakers over here. They're going to see this. Yeah, you, maybe you, you could go find out who, who that was. Maybe they're, maybe they're in trouble. Yeah, you're all about to be in trouble if the caretakers see this. We're better at hiding than someone in purple robes. <laughs> uh, yeah, wait, who even are you? First off, I'm older than you, so treat me with respect. Second, my name is Adthea. Well, uh, Adthea. Are you any good at hiding, Adthea? Help? What are we supposed to do? I can get rid of this for you, but you're going to have to do something for me in exchange. What do you want? You just said that, Necra? Yeah, what, 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 do you, what do you want? All right. She looks straight directly at you. And the words that she says are, you're going to owe me a favor. But the words that you hear, you can hear those words, but you feel a separate set of words almost in your mind. You're going to find out that one secret and tell me. And in your head, you see the image of Alexander. Aw, shit. <laughs> Busted and, in 4K, dude. And like, Ariana at this point is like so confused, right? Because mm -hmm. during the, the, the lesson that we had, when Alexander was doing his magic, mm -hmm. 
I was feeling something very unique happening in the space. And so Ariane at this point is, you know, she's not good at hiding things on her face. She so she kind of, you know, she she goes like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh huh. You agree? Huh. Uh, do we have any other option? While, while, while Ariana is negotiating, can uh, Athelor have a sidebar with his uncle? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if you're there, I could really use a hint of Mr. Clancy's right now. This power, the void, a sphere of annihilation. Invaluable. Beyond your control. Perhaps if we worked together. But it would have to be concealed. I don't think we could conceal it here if they're this close. Maybe if they're distracted. No. Let's see if but Ariana's bargain can save us. That creature. Not a student. A liar. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Athel suddenly seems very pale, <laughs> even compared to his usual almost uh, <laughs> pallid skin self. And also, in response to you, Necra, Athea said, Not unless you want the caretakers to find out. They might throw you out of the school for this, or worse. This is a big can problem. I, can I roll an, um, an insight check, I guess? Because I yes. want to see if this student is deceiving me. Yes, you can. <laughs> you got no. oh. a natural <laughs> one. Uh, you are. I'm going to say that like the the emotions and the scare, like the the situation is very flustering and stressful, uh, and that is going to cloud your judgment. Unless you have a different way you'd like to interpret the natural one. Nope. Yeah, I, I think I agree to this. I think that not one makes me agree to this. Okay. For a moment, a gleeful grin, just the slightest for a fraction, a single frame on the camera, on the film. You'd have to freeze frame it to see. A gleeful grin passes across her. <laughs> As she raises, all right, then a lot of you scamper. I'm going to see to this. And she holds out her hands, mutters a spell, and uh, raises a fog cloud over it. Huh. How's that going to help? Well, what are the lot of you going to do? Garnet, especially you, since you're the one who apparently cut a hole in the universe. What are the lot of you going to do as, as fog begins to gather around it? We should we should find our, our way back, right? Garnet, are, are you are you okay? You... I did did I did I do that? No, but you you ran off. I I've okay. If I had to be honest with you guys, since it's just us and the weirdo over there, um, I think I was about to kill something, and I just didn't want it to be you guys. So I felt I should probably be just taking huh. a second, um. And it sounds like that was a good plan, because if that came from me, then I'm really sorry, and I'm glad it's in the middle of nowhere. Well, I appreciate the compassion. I don't think you're the only one ready to kill something here. Do we... How is this fog? What if someone just accidentally walks into the black hole because there's a fog thing? The fog billows and swirls, and as Athea continues to chant, she is now stepping forward into the fog with multicolored phantasmal lights around her hands as she continues to cite an incantation. Can Ooh. we tell what that I, I, incantation is? Athelor can give it a go because my gift from the treasure last time around was the ear horn of hearing, baby. <laughs> let's go, oh, let's go. Nice. nice. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Garnet, you expressed an interest in figuring out what this is. Athelor, you're using the Horn of Hearing, which would have been really helpful for Alexander when he was spying on the grown-ups, by the way. Um, uh, I, I oh, was yeah. going to suggest that, but I was asleep at the time slash incapacitated with my, <laughs> <Valid>. <laughs> with perpetual disadvantage. 
<laughs> so here's what we're going to do with that. Um, you're going to roll. Athelor is going to roll a perception check. Garnet's going to roll an arcana check. Are Ariana or Alexander doing anything in response to this? Um, not really. I, th- I think Alexander is just kind of voicing concerns of we're, we're, we're going to get lost and separated if we don't head back soon in the fog. They might come over looking and don't get in trouble. Uh, I roll the inside check now, the perception check. Yeah, roll perception check. Oh, piss waffles. If you're listening, you get advantage because you're using the magic horn. Oh, okay. And the lucky dice. <laughs> you have a lucky dice if you want to spend it. <laughs> That's true. Let's just keep going, maybe. <laughs> Bam. No, we're lucky dice to get. All right. A total of 11. And Garnet roll an Arcana check. Oh, shit. A 15. Okay. Uh... Athelor, what languages do you speak? Uh, common and Elven. Okay. It's neither of those. It's definitely not either of those. Are you proficient in history? Yes. Okay. Roll a history check for me. Oh, shit. We take the first. We just take the first. A 20. This is, this is almost like a really old offshoot of the elven tongue you don't understand it but it might be sylvan the language of fey creatures Uh oh. and uh garnet you recognize as athea walks towards and the 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 lights gathering around her hands this is powerful magic and it ties into the other world the fantastic fairy land that overlaps with the mortal realm it's fairy magic. Oh. She looked like a human, right? So how I close don't... is she f- to the token-wise? I will Asking move her. She friend. is approaching. She is within five feet of it. She is here. I can kill her if we want to kill her. I think after the laws moved up wanna... next to Garnet now. So they're collectively spying. Why do you look so pale, Athelor? What's wrong? I fear this creature has very ill intentions, and I don't think it's a human. Uh, Alexander and Ariana, are the two of you hanging back? Yeah, I think Alexander's like sully backing up. <laughs> Guys, can we go now? Yeah. <laughs> What's Ariana doing? Nick, are you with us? I guess. Sorry. I guess like... Sorry, I was just thinking about what I'm doing. I That's feel fair. Like, it's a pickle. Because I was looking at my spells, and I'm like, I don't think there's anything that I can particularly do in this situation that is going to be helpful. I feel like I would just be behind Athelor at this point, still, like, cowering in fear. He's tall, <laughs> right? I can <laughs> just, like, be behind him and be He's fine. a long boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I can't think of anything else that I would be able to do. Okay, Ariana and Alexander are looking on in deep, deep concern. Athelore and Garnet are conspiring. Adthea approaches it, and the fairy lights surround her, and they form a ring around the sphere of annihilation. What do you do? Do I feel attached to this? So what's my connection with... Can I tell my connection with the, that void thing? You can feel... Or? Yes, you can feel its presence. It's it's like a thin shell over just an absolute hole in the universe. And it came from your power. You opened the door that, that let it in. You punched that hole in the universe. You can feel a connection to it. I probably whispered to Athlor, Do you want me to kill her? <laughs> Like, in a very serious tone, do you want me to kill her? Is that something you normally do to solve your problems? Not often. First time for everything, right? Is that a yes? Well, I would like some more insight into a plan. I don't know if you'll be able to do it by yourself. The fairy lights grow higher and higher. The time decision, to make a decision is now. <laughs> yes or no? Uh, Athalor in this position sort of goes into his old mind palace and like, I think it's time. 
to duel? To kill him? <laughs> <laughs> it's time to duel? <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's speaking to his old uncle about doing it together, baby. Then we begin. Focus upon it. Uh, uh, I, I meant to just read that. Uh, but <laughs> well, myself. would you like to also cast it? Wait, did Athlor say yes? Uh, Athlor uh, turned Athlore. to his uncle and asked for help, and his uncle told him to focus his mind on the sphere of annihilation and will it to move. You, you deal with a woman. I'll try and deal with a sphere. Ready? Go, go team. <laughs> And I start casting that cantrip. Okay. You open the door with to the void once again, and you unleash a tendril of shadow that lashes out and seizes at Thea. And if she fails on her save, she gets moved. I assume you're trying to dunk her into the thing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am rolling a strength saving throw. What's your spell save, DC? Oh, it's uh, 14. Okay. Come on, it's Lamp. And welcome I got to a 12. <laughs> oh my god. Um. We're gonna okay. die. Yeah, so <laughs> she, a, a tendril of shadow lashes out from Garnet, wraps around Adthea and pulls her into the sphere. And as she comes in contact with the sphere of annihilation, the spell, the glamour that she's woven upon herself shreds. And you can see the shriveled form of a green hag with long stringy hair, wrinkled skin, you know, claws and the like, screaming as she gets sucked around in a circle into the, the, the negative zone and is instantaneously annihilated. Team Rocket's blasting off again. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> no one speaks to me like that. And the fairy bargain that she placed on Ariana is broken. Do I do I know that this has happened? Uh, Can I like feel it? Can I sense it? I, I think you you didn't sense it when it was placed on you, but now that she's dead, you're suddenly aware that you were going to have to find out Alexander's secret and tell her. While gotcha. Garnet is more celebrating, Athelor's still deeply focused on L singularity. Okay, roll an Arcana check. Bam. Uncle is also rolling an Arcana check. Ooh, Unky. Got a 20. God. You take the better <laughs> of the two. Focus. Focus. And as you try to focus on it, it slips out of your control and it slides directly through space right in front of you. It moves 10 feet towards you. I'm focusing, I'm focusing! Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> That's very close. Can oh, you now. stop? Stop putting it closer to us. It takes a truly focused and sharpened mind to manipulate it. If we fail, it will be drawn towards us. We should halt for the time being. And everybody roll 1d20. Feel free to respond like that, but also everyone roll 1d20. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, th I think we, um... Yep. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. Garnet got a 7. Alexander got a 6. Athelor got a two and Ariana got a 20. What else does she win? Uh... Oh, Emissary of the Deeps. Hark, Liban's companions rise from the depths. Oh, okay. We are, we are short on time, but I know exactly what to do with this. I'm going to give one pass to the party to do as you choose, and then some shit is going down. <laughs> Was there any loot left behind from the fairy? <laughs> no, no. Like, there used to be, but 
It doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. Well, actually, you know, we did get some treasures uh, from chat a while ago. We could roll for her to, like, drop some stuff. <laughs> and she's, like, yoinked out of, mm -hmm. out of place. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Uh, I will figure out what that is while the rest of you discuss. I feel like Ariana at this point is, like, mortified by what she's seen at this point. And she's like, oh, my God, we have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. We just have to get out of here. Go back to the path. Uh, Alex, you've got to be with me. I'm, I'm already. <laughs> <laughs> He's been trying. He's been trying. <laughs> Yeah, He's like halfway so gone. Like Alex is talking, it's like halfway yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, at this point, I feel like the roles are reversed now. Now Ariana is like dragging Athelor along. Like, come on, let's go. <laughs> I think we can all agree. Good murder, Garnet. Good murder. Let's get out. Just... Hey, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Secret, secret, secret. Yeah, this doesn't leave yeah. this, this forest. We can't. It, tell it won't. No. It, yeah. yeah. We don't care oh if God. we won't leave this forest. <laughs> Well, we can't just leave this hole here. What if it gets bigger? But that is someone else's problem who is much older and much smarter and much not here right now. We'll come back for it. I'll, I'll draw the location of it. I, I, hey, I sure. I'm down. not too oblivious. <laughs> That's going to be great. Just <laughs> punch a hole in the know. parchment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just leave Put out, we're about here. Boom. It's right there. It's a black hole. Should All we right. come back later or tomorrow? or? You I'll have discovered the following things amongst the hag's belongings. Since Athelor is panicking, but not so panicking that he doesn't have a moment to stop for loot. Athelor is always <laughs> thinking about the loot. <laughs> he loves trinkets. <laughs> All right. Um, there is a cheap-looking pendant with like a like a copper chain and a, a piece of citron or quartz on the end of it. So it's like a cheap, semi-precious stone amulet. But when you take a look inside, there's an eyeball in there. Uh. <laughs> That's the first thing that you found. The second thing that okay. you found. Athelor, for, forever a joker, get, goes to open it, show it to Ariana, who he, <laughs> he assumes to be Swedish. Are you seeing this? <laughs> Are you, so you seeing this? <laughs> the 10 year old joke is uh, expertly crafted and deployed. You won't, you won't wear toe socks, but you'll touch an eyeball. <laughs> it's it's within. I'm not touching the eyeball. It's within the pendant. It is gross, though. Like yeah. toe socks. <laughs> that was the first treasure of three treasures that we have waiting. The second treasure is a liquid filled jar. With another eyeball in it. Ew. Ah, oh, buddy system. <laughs> <laughs> you put the two of them together, and you know. And the final thing that you find amongst the hags. Okay, I'm not getting three eyeballs. That's just excessive. <laughs> what did you? What did? What did you kill? A human and a cyclops? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Worse, they're offspring. Uh, you actually find a seemingly empty sealed jar. Someone farted in this. <laughs> Eat in there. <laughs> Open and smell it, I dare you. You really are 10. <laughs> oh, I'm still 10. <laughs> All right. And after that, as you're all... I. It, are you all down to leave the hole in the universe in this grove and just run away like you never did anything? Yeah. Like yeah. Optionally screaming. Uh, are we saying yes or no on the screaming? No, no screaming. <laughs> no screaming. Stealthy. We were never here. Okay. Uh, as you one, as you run backwards, the fog seems to have grown particularly thick, and you find yourselves no longer exactly where the map says you should be. Uh, instead, you come through the mist to the very heart of the river itself. That's not where we were. We were pretty far from here. Did, did you draw it right? Is, it, is the map wrong? I, I don't. I don't think so. I, we sh the way we were going was was wasn't here. 
and floating over the water, its lower half a whirlpool, a water spout, is a incredible is a large, like hu- incredibly large, ten feet tall or taller, well dressed, finely dressed fish person. And that's where we're going to call it for tonight, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Cliffhanger. Oh. Yep. We have a 1.0 KDA, guys. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Infinite <laughs> KDA. No, it, 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 10 years old. Not bad. Exactly. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> I mean, mathematically, each of you has only Good killed point two five. True. Yeah. If, but if you're doing team person? stats. Yeah. Oh. But it's a hag though, so like that counts for a lot. Yeah. That's true, that's true. Glad we took we took the gamble on if that was a hag or not, because I was like, I just killed the senior. <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting detention for this? <laughs> yeah, I, I committed murder. We could get killed or worse, expelled. <laughs> <laughs> good murder, good murder. Let's fuck off. <laughs> good murder, good murder. GG, oh. GG. Oh man, uh, GG, yeah, everybody. Yeah. If your uh, if your channel point re- that reward that you purchased wasn't honored during this stream, your points will be refunded. Uh, thank you so much for all of your support. Chat is why uh, there was a hag and and why there's a hole in the universe and why there's a fish person. But we're all tying it into the plot in a satisfying way because this fish person knows something about the weird weather that you're all invest- investigating. Ah, okay, okay. And, okay. Fish piss. It all makes sense. <laughs> and wants to have a conversation about the hole in the universe that just opened up. So oh, fuck. when we come back, we will resolve this scene and our 10-year-olds will, will move on a year and get their orange robes, perhaps even to, into their yellow robes. So thank you. Join us next week for more Book of Dawn IOP Academy. <laughs>